Welcome back to the channel, guys. It's Maz back again with another video for you guys. Today, once again, we are changing direction on the one-to-one -one hard body XJ on the TRX4. Thank y'all will enjoy this. I know a lot of y'all have been seeing my videos about airbrushes and airbrush paint and 2K clears through an airbrush and all that stuff. And I know a lot of y'all may think that's a daunting task. So you may say, hey, I don't have that equipment or I don't wanna purchase that equipment. I just wanna use cans. Well, today's your lucky day. I've decided to go cans only on the XJ Hardbody. So we're gonna get away from the airbrush 100%. We've already went over the filler primer and the sandable primer in an earlier video. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. Make sure, especially with the with the temperature changing everywhere right now, make sure that you're giving that stuff proper time to cure before you sand any of it. Um, I got kind of caught in the middle of it and it cooled down literally the week I started doing the sandable primer and I had to give that stuff an extended time and actually put it over a dehydrator to, to let it cure completely before sanding. You don't wanna sand any of that stuff or any of these products, you don't wanna sand without being fully cured. It will make your life miserable. Um, so just remember your curing times are gonna change as your temperature changes. Um, the next step, I've actually got the body in full primer for the last time it's curing. And once it's cured, we're gonna come back and wet sand it with some either sandpaper or some scotch bright depending on what kind of imperfections we have if it's just a you know perfect finish we'll come back and just hit it with ultra fine wet scotch bright if we got you know i know i have one little sag in it uh on a fender where i had to cover up a pinhole i will have to sand that with a little bit of sandpaper first but no big deal like i said take your time with all these things but the next product that we'll end up putting on the truck is gonna be this Duplicolor Perfect Match. So this is a lacquer-based spray paint, and the color on this is bright white, and it gives you the color codes on it, and states it's for a Chrysler color. Well, Jeep Chrysler is one and the same, and bright white and these color codes match up with the 94 Cherokee. So this should be pretty much a perfect match, I guess. Uh, to my real one-to-one. -one. So once we get that applied, we'll come back and we'll scuff the body one more time with ultra fine scotch bright and water. And we that will be pretty much everything for the color. Um, I'll go ahead and jump out of line here. The next process will be 2K clear for the whole body for the... Um, you know, get your nice high gloss clear. This is a 2K clear in a can. So I've seen this for a long time. I know a lot of people use it in the model car uh, side of things. This is completely different than any of these other spray paints up here. So you see it has a red blister up top and has a post on the bottom. And what that does is you put that red blister on there you smack it down on the table and it pierces the inside of the can and lets the catalyst, this is a two part. So there's 2K clear uncured in here right now. And then there is another uh, a separate compartment of catalyst. And once you pierce that, you then shake it up, you know, get it good and shaken up and that'll mix your catalyst with your clear. And that's when your time, well, that's when your time clock starts. So, you have 48 hours to use that product from the time you pierce the bottom. If you don't use it, you lose it. So that's how 2K works. Now there are other ones out there that don't work like that, but they've not been out long enough for me to trust. So this is one and done. This will also give me a little bit more orange peel than what an airbrush definitely will. That's one of my reasons I like an airbrush. But I know that going into it, I know this truck's gonna get beat up. I'm going to drive the truck, so I don't really care if it has a little bit of orange peel in it. It's not going to hurt me. I really don't want to wet sand and buff it, but if it's too much orange peel, I know how I am. I'm a perfectionist, and it'll be a whole 
uh, wet sand and buff and all that stuff will be, we'll go over that if I decide to do it. Lastly is trim black. That will go over the window moldings, the lower moldings on the hard body, the bumpers, the grill, the door handles. That will be our last layer that we'll do. This is SEM trim black. I get this from O'Reilly's. We have a paint shop O'Reilly's uh, that has a paint shop in the back. I don't know if you can get this at a regular O'Reilly's. If not, you can order it online. Same thing for this one. You can order this on Amazon. They're $24. $25 for the SEM trim black. I know you're going to say that's a lot of money, but this is different from any flat black spray paint or, or matte black, satin black spray paint that I've ever had. It's more automotive grade. It's actually made to match OEM uh, coatings and refinish and automobile trim components. That's what it's made for. So professionals use this, even though they have paint guns and everything, a lot of guys use this on Hondas and all kinds of different stuff for trim. Uh, it always comes out very consistent where you can get a can of Krylon for $8 and sometimes it'll be all splotchy. It just depends how good you are at spraying it. This SEM trim black, you pay a premium, but you also get great coverage, and it also comes in a, obviously the largest can out of any of them. So it's worth it in my opinion. It'll go a long way as long as you turn it upside down and clear the nozzle, and I always take acetone and wipe the tip. That's what she said. Uh, don't wipe your tip with acetone. That's not a good idea. Um, in other facets of life but on this you definitely want any of these i always wipe the nozzles off with acetone after i'm done blowing them out upside down uh except for this one obviously that's one and done but that way you don't get any chunks of paint dried up in the nozzle or anything like that the last thing i want to go over make sure you either have wax and grease remover or you buy yourself some of these prep wipes this is a newer product that i haven't used before i usually get a gallon of wax and grease remover. That stuff's not cheap either. And these are like $3 and you probably need two of them to do a paint job. You wanna wipe it after each, maybe three of them to do a full paint job. You don't wipe it before you put any kind of products onto the body and in between any sanding or really any time it's just sitting collecting dust. You wanna make sure you wipe it down, then wipe it with a clean lint free rag and then let the rest evaporate before you spray anything on. But these are one-time use. You open the package, it has a wipe in there. It's a nice, good size. You can wipe the whole body down multiple times. You know, blow it off with air. Your, your prep is 99% of your paint job. If you have bad prep, I promise your paint job's gonna suck. That's all there is to it. Even though I'm going the can route, don't think that's a budget route. So. Me and Corey from GNCRC added it up yesterday, and just in cans of paint alone, I have $120 plus tax. That's bare minimum. That doesn't include these prep wipes. That doesn't include sandpaper, scotch Bright, uh, paper towels. Doesn't include lacquer thinners or acetones or anything like that. I'm talking about just cans of primer, paint, trim, and 2K clear. So... It's not a budget by any means, but you already got $100 in the body. Why skimp on just throwing a, a paint job of Krylon on there, you know? Take your time. So I don't want to make this video too long. As always, guys, like, comment, and subscribe. Turn that notification bell on. And until the next time, y'all have a good one.